What are the signs that you may see in a disc and would we'll say this is certainly it's a glaucomatous or a strong indication for glaucoma or you get a moderate indication of glaucoma? The certain indications that this disc is glaucomatous are number one, focal notch. This black white image is the same as the colored, I just get it and change it into black and white for a better visualization. You can see here the cup is in black and the neural tissue around and you can notice that the neural tissue in this part is thinner than the remaining. It is apparent on the color but in the black and white you can see it better. So the definition of the notch is an area where the neural tissue is thinner than the remaining neural tissue by this less thickness should be at least 0.1 of the whole disc diameter and in the circumference should be less than three hours it can be one hour two hours or three hours some people will say up to four hours but if you get this thinning more than the three or the four hours it's not a notch so the definition of the notch is narrowing of the neural tissue by 0.1 compared to the remaining neural tissue and, and the circumference should be less than three hours. This is a, a definite sign that this patient most probably, not 100%, but most probably is glaucomatous. Again, if you get a complete absence of the neural tissue in an area, or an extensive area, this is most probably you are dealing with glaucoma. Or if you follow the patient and by time the neural tissue is getting less and less. So these three signs, the notch and the absence of the neural tissue or the change of the size of the neural tissue over time are very, very strong sign that this patient is most probably glaucomatous. Strong indications of glaucoma Number one, the shape of the neural rim, or what we call the isn't rule. Normally, the neural rim is widest, is thickest, inferiorly, then superiorly, then nasal, then temporal. And this can be abbreviated to this word, is not, isn't. This is the thickness of the neural tissue, maximum inferior, then superior, the nasal, and lastly on the temporal side. If the neural tissue follow this appearance, most probably we are dealing with a normal disc. But if this sign is not followed, most probably we are dealing with abnormal disc. So comparing, on this image, the neural tissue is almost equal, and this is very suspicious of abnormality, while here the new isn't rule is followed. Although the cup is wide, as here, but the neural tissue follow the isn't rule, so most probably we are on the safe side. The same, but another example. Again, if the two discs are of the same size and there is asymmetry in the neural tissue between the two eyes of more than 0.2, this is a very strong indication of pathology. Difference in the neural tissue, provided that the size of the disc is the same. Disc hemorrhage, again, is an indication of something abnormal is going on. It's very rare to see disc hemorrhage in the normal, but in the glaucoma, it is there in four to seven percent of glaucomatous. Disc hemorrhage are there for certain time, and they will disappear. And if you follow this patient by time, where the disc hemorrhage is, after some time you will find field defect, neurological field defect corresponding to the location of the hemorrhage. Keep in mind glaucoma is not the only disease that causes disc hemorrhage. Another sign is the shape of the parapapillary atrophy. In any eye, we can see these areas of parapapillary atrophy. We have alpha zone and we have beta zone. Alpha zone is a zone of hyperpigmentation. 
Beta zone is a zone of hypopigmentation, of a zone of atrophy of the retinal pigment epithelium and the choriocapillaries. So alpha zone is inside. Alpha zone is outside and beta zone is inside. In the normal eye, the nangulocomatous eye, normally the parapapillary atrophy is present on the temporal side. Then, if it appears more, it will appear up and down, and lastly, to appear on the nasal side. This is the normal distribution in the normal nangulocomatous eye. The width of the alpha zone and beta zone, the appearance of the parapapillary atrophy, usually it starts on the temporal side. Then it appears up and down, and lastly it appears on the nasal. On the other hand, in glaucoma, the parapapillary atrophy appears corresponding to the area of the neural damage. If you have a notch in one location, then corresponding to this notch, you get a widened area of parapapillary atrophy. It's located just ahead, just corresponding to the area of the neural damage. It doesn't follow the normal we've seen here on this left side. This is because glaucoma, one of the explanations of the theories of glaucoma is it's an ischemic process. This is the fluorescein in cases of antiosegment optic neuropathy, and there's some areas known as the watershed zones. The supply of the choroid is not homogeneous all over. Areas of the choroids get segmental supply. So be in between the segments, at the border of the segments, you get an area of less blood supply. We call this watershed zone. In this study, they were following the location of the watershed zones among different persons. And you can see sometimes you get a watershed zone like this or here. Sometimes it's three direction like this, and so on. And they get these different patterns of watershed zone. This is just one, this is three in different directions. So this is the area where if there is ischemia, the ischemia will be maximum at the watershed zone. So if you get some problem in the blood supply here, so in this location, you will get a neural rim atrophy, and opposite to it, you will get a parapapillary atrophy. This is the explanation why parapapillary atrophy will occur corresponding to the neural damage. Then we need to learn to look not only at the disc, but to the neural rim, the nerve fiber layer of the retina. Normally, we get striations. These are the reflex of the light on the nerve fiber layer of the retina. If there is an atrophy in the nerve fiber layer, you will see something like that, a wedge-shaped area pointing to the disc with no reflection, no striations. You can see it better if you use the red-free light. Here, notice the neural rim. All you can see there is advanced cupping in this side. But I want you to notice these striations, which are not seen here. And the vessels here are not clear seen as in this situation. In this side, there is an atrophy, at a diffuse atrophy all over of the nerve fiber layer. So the striations disappeared, and the vessels are more prominent compared to the other side. So not always depend on the disc, but you have to keep an eye on the retinal nerve fiber layer. Localized nerve fiber layer defects occurs in a list of conditions other than glaucoma. The defect can be a wedge, like here. This is the normal striations, but are absent here. And can be a diffuse disappearance of the striations. What do you think of this image? If you just keep an eye on the striations, I want you to look in the upper part here, 
and notice the striations of the nerve fiber layer. This sector, there is no striations compared to the nearby one. So this is a suspicious sign that this nerve could have a problem. There are other indications for disc changes may arouse our attention of glaucoma.